the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, whether you are coming into worship here uh, through Zoom or through Facebook, I want to welcome you. It is such a great joy to come together and worship God. During worship this morning, we will again be celebrating communion, so be sure to have your bread and juice, some kind of cracker or uh, some kind of uh, beverage, coffee is fine, water is good, uh, tea, all of those are good. This morning, our Old Testament scripture is going to be coming to us from Psalm 16. This uh, is our, uh, I think it's our third week in our sermon series titled Jesus I Am Statements. So there are seven statements that Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. And uh, two weeks ago, we looked at the statement uh, where Jesus says, I am the gate. And last week, we looked at Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. And this week, our scripture is going to come from uh, John chapter 14. And we'll, beginning, we'll be focusing really on the first 12 uh, verses uh, in, in John 14, verses 1 through 12. And we're going to focus on the statement that Jesus makes in uh, verse 6, which is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. As we have gathered to worship God, I invite you to come now and see for yourselves. God is alive in our midst, even though we are scattered, and begins life anew among us. You today and in your life, I hope that you do see the very nature of God in those who are gathered around you, and if you are watching and you're by yourself, remember that the saints that have gone before us are surrounding you as well, and Jesus is with you. Get ready to stand firm and stand on the rock that is Jesus Christ. And from there, when we stand on that rock, we're going to feel the confidence of the one who is indeed our way, our truth, and the life. Welcome. Will you please pray with me? Lord, you have brought us to yourself. You have given us the gift of faith. Your mercies towards us are more than we could ever hope for. Indeed, they are more than we deserve. We stand in awe before you today, offering our gifts, our hearts, our abilities, and our worship. And as we do gather, we know that we have turned our backs onto your call. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us for our narrowness and prejudice, our quick tempers, Lord, and our stingy grace. Forgive us for our attention to the faults of others and blindness to our own faults. Help us, Lord, to be the people you created us to be. Help us live together in peace, loving and caring for one another as you love and care for us all. Come now, O Holy One, and make us fully your own through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, even, even though we, we know we're a stubborn people, still God loves us absolutely and forgives us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven people. Let us live in that way and that truth. Alleluia. Amen. Wanted to share with you Psalm 16 this morning. Find my Bible. It's always helpful. Listen to these words that come to us. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom all is my delight. Those who chose another god, they multiply their sorrows. They drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. 
Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to shield or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forever, forevermore. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, every Sunday, whether we are here in person or not, we do receive an offering that you give up to the Lord. This offering is a way of saying thank you to God for, for life, for love, for family, for friends. And I wanted to share with you this morning what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to be reading uh, from the message translation. Because it talks about what we can offer to God. Listen to what Paul said. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into to it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognizing what he wants from you and quickly responding to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. This morning, I invite you to give your entire life to God as your offering. Um, you may take time to write your check or to put your cash in an envelope or just give up your heart to the Lord. And as you do, I invite you to listen to Mary Ann play uh, a piece this morning. so much thank you let's pray Lord Jesus you gave us your life that we might know the fullness of God's love for us in your spirit of compassion and humility we make this offering in your example of love and mercy let us serve those in need and let us serve in your name receive and bless our offering and our giving we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I'll read to you from the NRSV version of John 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you will be there also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How could we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Now Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. 
Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A renowned uh, scientist was frustrated with the popularity of misinformation that was going around. And in, a, in an interview, he tells the press this. He says, my research is meaningless if it's taken out of context. The next day, the public is taken by storm as a headline spread that renowned scientist claims that his research is meaningless. These days, that joke has become so close to what's actually happening in the news. And it really points out the importance of how we need to know the context of what is being said especially in the Bible. Everything comes back to context. We need to know where Jesus is, who he was talking to, and when it was said, so that when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, we have a bigger picture, we have an understanding. This is really a critical statement. See, over the years, this statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life, uh, that no one comes to the Father except through me, in verse 6, this statement has been used to justify all kinds of cruel words and really mean actions. It's been used to judge, to criticize, and condemn other people. But when we know this context, then we discover that Jesus is really speaking words of love and, and comfort. So, to get a picture of the context, to understand uh, what's going on, if you go back to John 13, at that point, Jesus and the disciples are in the upper room, and they are eating their last supper. Of course, they, they don't know it's their last meal together. Uh, Jesus is talking, remember, to his closest friends. They already love him. And they already follow him. He's not talking to some curious bystander or the crowds or even to the religious leaders like the Pharisees. This is a private, personal conversation. And Jesus in chapter 13, John 13, tells them that he is going to a place where they cannot come. He is leaving them behind. And Peter's like, but what? Where are you going? Where? And Jesus said, where I'm going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow afterwards. So don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to a place and will come back for you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, Jesus says, I am, echoing the name of God that was given to Moses on the mountain. When Moses asked God, who, who am I going to tell them? I need to say your name. What's your name? And so Jesus is using the same name the same divine name as God did. And by doing so, he claims his divinity. And then Jesus says he is the way. Reverend Dr. Marcus Borg says this. He says, the way is what we see in his life. We see a life of loving God and loving others. A life of challenging the powers that oppress this world. A life radically centered in the God to whom he bore witness. You remember back when, um, just, just a few years ago, I'm sure the old saying, WWJD, so that actually was in the 90s, so it was longer ago than we think. But anyway, WWJD stood for uh, what would Jesus do? And it really meant that we were to ask ourselves, what way would Jesus respond to hatred or injustice or inequity? What way would Jesus show love? What way would Jesus show hospitality or offer hope? See, the disciples actually do know the way because Jesus has told them. He has already said, follow my example. Be humble. Wash one another's feet. 
love one another, sacrifice for the good of the other, all of these things that they've not only heard Jesus say, they have seen him do. So while the duh disciples, I just heard that this week I had to share it, duh disciples are confused, the true way to live and love has already been made very clear to us. See, Jesus' way leads us to the love of the Father. We know that Jesus is one with the Father. He says it over and over in John. He opens the way for us because he is holy and sinless. But the truth is, if we care to admit it, which we usually don't, we are not sinless. We tend to, we do make ourselves God of our own little universe. We put ourselves in the center and everything revolves around us. The truth is whatever we do ultimately is to our own glory and praise. The truth is, again, if we care to admit it, is that whatever we do, whatever we use, or whatever we try to make ourselves feel better or be better ultimately fails. And we can't, we can't save ourselves. The truth is we need a Savior. And we need Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Savior. He is the flesh and blood reality of all God's claims and God's promises. It's like all of the promises that we've heard in the Old Testament have just been like just shaped into Jesus Christ who is living in flesh and blood. It's the promises of the Good Shepherd who would lead, provide, and protect for God's flock. It's the promises of the Messiah who would save God's people from their sin, and it is the promise made over and over of the one who would come and deliver us. Jesus came into the world to bring light and love and life. Without Jesus, we do live in darkness. But Jesus is the way out of that darkness into the light of his Father. Believing in Jesus is the way to abundant life for us, not just today, but for every day and forever, for all eternity. See, when we believe in Jesus, we are united with God. We join Jesus and God to bring healing, to bring hope, uh, to bring love and to forgiveness right into this world. Even, even though as we move towards the eternal life that is yet to come. One of the very classic thoughts on John 14 uh, is authored by Thomas Akempis in this book, The Imitation of Christ, in chapter 56. Um, in, this book was written a long time ago, several centuries ago. It's classic, and it's written in the voice of Jesus. If, if you're familiar with um, the Jesus Calling series, that is too is a, a series written uh, in the voice of Jesus. So this is, this is coming from The Imitation of Christ, chapter 56, and Jesus says this, in the voice of Jesus, Thomas Akempis wrote, Follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. I am the way which you must follow, the truth which you must believe, and the life for which you must hope. I am the inviolable, inviolable way, the infallible truth, the unending life. I am the way that is straight, the supreme truth, the life that is true, the blessed, the uncreated life. If you abide in my way, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, and you shall attain life everlasting. He goes on to say, if you wish to enter into life, keep my commandments. If you will know the truth, believe in me. If you will be perfect, sell all. If you will be my disciple, deny yourself. If you will possess the blessed life, despise the present life. If you will be exalted in heaven, humble yourself on earth. If you wish to re reign with me, carry the cross with me. For only the servants of the cross find the life of blessedness and of true life. Jesus shows us the way into the truth and the life found it with God. He offers those who love him assurance, reassurance, and comfort and hope. 
for when it seems like the world is coming to an end and the world is just rocking on its foundation, we follow him and we do not need then to be afraid or worried. Just want to remind you that as you read the Bible and as we remember this context of John 14 that took place at the Last Supper when Jesus is speaking privately to his beloved dearest friends just before he's crucified. Remember that context and then remember our own context. We are Christians. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God who loves us so much that he offers us the way, the truth, and the life into the love of God, our Heavenly Father. And for that I say, thanks be to God. Amen. This time I invite you to prepare for communion. Brothers and sisters, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, a table prepared for us in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's also a table that's been prepared for us in front of even those that we might call our enemies. A banquet of love is right here in the face of, of all of the injustice and the hatred and everything else that's wrong with the world. Here is God's love. Here God's love overflows for us. And here we find the depths of God's kindness and love and mercy as we share this wonderful feast. This table does not belong to the Presbyterian Church. It does not. It is, belongs to Jesus, who is our host. And he is the one who invites us here to meet him. I invite you now to pray with me. God of every people, you created the world long before this nation or long before any other in the first days of creation, you said, let there be light. And light separated itself from the night. How can we ever comprehend your power? How can we ever be worthy of your love? How, Lord, can we ever measure up to your goodness? Hear us as we proclaim your majesty. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Christ came into this world as a helpless infant, showing us that the weakness of humanity was not beyond redemption. Born as a refugee in a scary and violent world, Lord, your son came as one of us to show us the way. Being born, he was a vehicle of your love. Walking many miles, he teaches us to travel to the unknown. Teaching love, he helps us to understand our capacity for compassion Healing the sick, he inspires us to share your healing power. Teaching the broken, he reminds us that we are indeed works in progress. And then sacrificing himself, he shows that love triumphs over hate. So with thanksgiving, Lord, we take this bread, this cup, and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Make us one with Christ, and Lord, make us one with all of those who share this feast. No matter where we are, scattered around the country, unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love that we may serve, Lord, as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We do give you praise, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh in the Holy and life-giving Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, picked up the bread, and after giving thanks to God, his heavenly Father, he broke it. And he handed it to each of his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, he said, this cup is a new covenant. Covenant that has been sealed in my blood that was shed for the forgiveness of your sins, for our sins. Every time that we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we remember the Lord's saving grace until he comes again. And so as we remember this, as we do this feast, wherever you are, I want you to Take and eat your bread first when you are ready. And then if you'll hold on to the cup, we will drink that together. 
Friends, the table is ready. Body of Christ, broken for you. Today we drink this cup as a sign and a symbol that we are united in Jesus Christ. We are all one faith. Physically, we're all apart, but together through Christ we are united, not only with Christ, but with God, our Heavenly Father. And so today as we drink this cup together, we drink this cup of salvation. Please pray with me. And at the end, if you would join in to, uh, with the Lord's Prayer wherever you are, let's pray. Good and gracious God, you alone are the way, the truth, and the life. We do praise you for your good gift of the truth, which is in you. When we don't know what to do, Jesus, you do show us the way, and it is a way of love and forgiveness and mercy. Your way is your truth all lead to an abundant and eternal life with you. We praise your holy name. Lord, now in the silence of our hearts, we lift up to you those who, who we worry about. Even though we aren't to worry, we give them over to you. We know we do that. We lift up those who need your healing, your courage, your strength. We pray for those who are grieving, for those who are anxious, scared, and afraid. Father, you know the needs of your people, and so we boldly pray that you meet them. You know the needs of this country, this nation. We ask that you remove the virus, give wisdom to the nations, leaders, and help us to look to you for direction as you are the way, our truth, our life. Strengthen us for the days to come so that we can truly walk in your way. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for all of the blessings that we have received, for negative COVID tests, for great results um, from scans and tests, from the ability to come together through technology and for your son, Jesus Christ. As we turn to him, Lord, we do pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for worshiping here with Community Presbyterian Church this morning. I invite you to receive the blessing. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. God loves you. I love you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Amen.